Now, locks on the Caledonian Canal are generally a lot bigger than locks you'll find elsewhere. So it pays to be 100% sure of locking procedures before you come in. Not only will it make your life easier, but it'll also be most appreciated by the lock keepers. First, let's think about approaching a lock. Whenever you pass moored boats, always slow down. If you go past too quickly, you might cause damage to the boat or an injury to the crew. As you approach the lock, look out for the lock keeper. If you can't see anyone, tie up on the nearby transit pontoon and go and look for him. They're never very far away from the lock. Do not enter the lock without being advised to by the lock keeper. That looks like him. The lock keeper will indicate which side of the chamber he wants you to use. Make sure your crew are ready with their life jackets on. One on the bow, that's the front, with the rope neatly coiled and passed under the rail. One at the stern, that's the back. If there are just two of you, then the skipper usually handles the stern line. Approach the lock side slowly. When you get close to the lock wall, the lock keeper will ask for the bow line, unless the wind is blowing from behind the boat, in which case he might ask for the stern line first. Throw the rope up to him, he'll then pass it around a cleat or bollard and then pass it back to you. When you have the rope back, hold on to it tightly. The stern line is then passed up to the lock keeper and then back to the crew member who stands holding the rope. When you have the rope ashore, put the engine into neutral and then switch the engine off. Don't touch the throttle when you have a line ashore. When learning to handle a boat, it's very easy to make a mistake. It's worth remembering that the slower we go, the less serious our mistakes are likely to be. Injury and damage tend to occur when we're going a bit too fast, so let's just slow it all down. Now sometimes you might find you're the only boat in the lock. At other times you may well be sharing with a fair few others, depending on how busy it is. When all the boats are in the chamber, the lock keeper will close the gates and open the sluices. This will then flood water into or out of the lock, depending on if you're going up or downhill. When this happens, there's quite a lot of turbulence in the water, which will cause your boat to move around, so hold on to the rope firmly. At this lock, we've seen a rise of just a couple of feet. At other locks, you'll find the rise or fall can be several feet. In those circumstances, the lock keeper will usually throw a line down to you, rather than you have to hurl one up to him, making life a lot easier. At Fort Augustus, there's not one lock, but five. Here, the crew will have to pull the boat through by hand. But don't worry, it sounds worse than it actually is. You'll find the lock keepers very helpful and obliging, and they'll always do their best to assist you along the way. OK, the locking procedure is nearly complete. The gates are opening and we'll soon be on our way. So we can turn the engine on now, but we must wait for the lock keeper's signal before moving off. Meanwhile, we keep a tight hold of the ropes at the bow and the stern. And as soon as we're through the lock, we'll make a point of getting those ropes neat and tidy, coiled up, ready for the next time we use them. The most important thing to make sure is that they can't drop back in the water. <laughs> 